All right, folks. Eric, the old jarhead here. So I was doing a little cleanup on the mill this last trip. Um, you know, I milled somewhere to about three o'clock and then packed up and, and headed home. And, and when I do that, I do a cursory spray down, cursory cleanup, and then get cracking, right? Get, and one of the problems I was having when I was out milling this past weekend was that I would engage the clutch and you know hit the forward switch i had some feed issues so i was cleaning the mill working on the mill here as you can see just trying to get things cleaned up because i was kind of in a rush last time and which is which is not normal for me in terms of all of a sudden i'm in a rush now to uh get the mill ready again for another job um, I work full-time during the week and work's been really crazy this last couple years um, I'm looking to retire someday soon. Well, you know next year sometime. Hopefully cross my fingers Then I can run the sawmill and have the time I need um, but anyway, so for those that don't know you Engage the clutch here I'm Turn this off See, You hit the clutch bang the band starts spinning Kick it into forward. If you're needing the debarker, you turn your debarker on. You know, you move your debarker. You, know, you adjust your guide arm if you need to. And then you turn your throttle, that your speed control is what this is right here. Usually with softwoods, I'm running about 11 o'clock. So, you know, if this is 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock is right about here. Um, I might be running 10 30, 11 o'clock, somewhere in this range right here. Okay. So I would turn it up, and if I'm in a wide cut, I might run a little bit slower, depending on band and everything else. So I turn it up, and the head would almost not move. And I would go, huh, what the heck? So I turn out, kick this off, disengage, raise the head, get it up out of the way of the log, boom, hit that, crank that up full speed, and it would just glide on down to the other end. And I would hit the reverse right here, hold the reverse down boom and it would slide all the way back no problem and i thought well, that is really weird why is it when i ha don't have the clutch engaged it moves back and forth fine it's pretty smooth travel everything is good to go life is great but as soon as i hit the clutch and i try to go and, and cut into a piece of wood boom everything slows down it goes chunky i'm starting to crank the speed up right here i'm cranking her up and I'm adjusting my speed control. I'm trying to, to get a smooth cut through the log and it is not cooperating. And then all of a sudden, everything would work fine again. So this was a real strange one. I thought, okay, if it's mechanical, it doesn't make sense that it would suddenly start to work and then it would not work for a, a, a minute or so and then it would work again. Like I might get, one pass and I'm kind of pushing and adjusting the speed control and just trying to get through so I could figure out what's wrong. And then I would pull it back and and run back and forth a couple times with no, no blade engaged, come back, drop it down to the next cut, engage the blade, kick forward, throw it up to 11. And you know, son of a gun, if it didn't take off, like everything was right in the world. And I thought, how the heck is that happening? So I called Wood Miser. So the first thing the Wood Miser suggested is one of the things I had not done in a while is I hadn't popped this panel off and made sure that all of my contacts were um, clean and had some dielectric grease on them. And there's a little dielectric grease piece in here, which I may have to pull off to show you. And, you know, these should run nice and smooth. And one of the things that I noticed at the end of the day was that these controls were not running smooth. So that tells me I need to do a little bit of maintenance with some dielectric grease and go in there and put that on there. There's your dielectric grease. It's got a little Velcro on it. A little grease cup, this one's nice and full. This velcro is on down there and then you can see your, your drum switches here and what I like to do is use a q-tip or something to put the, the, the dielectric on those 
Um, you can actually see some dark spots here from it um, getting old and needing, uh, needing to be added. Now, if you're in the field and you're desperate, a finger works. It ain't the best. Um, I think a Q-tip works much better. I don't happen to have one right now. So I will just get a little bit on here. And I'll just put a little bit. Try to just put a little bit. They say not to put too much, like so. Put a little bit on those. Okay, so now we got to put this back. And it's it's really that simple, folks. So uh, I went ahead and did that. And as I was doing it, I thought, well, that's not going to adjust the speed. That, that has nothing to do with the speed. But the other thing that he suggested was that the, the belt itself, the drive belt itself, could be loose. Since I was doing maintenance anyway, I went ahead, I cleaned everything out, I popped the cover off. And I just kind of grabbed the belt and I went like this and I went, holy cow, that is loose. So the book tells you that you need to have one eighth of an inch deflection. This is half an inch deflection um, with seven pounds of pressure. And I know where my eighth of an inch is on here. So I take that and I push it down to get about an eighth of an inch. And that's only about a one pound. So I'm going to have to adjust that real quick. I'm going to do that right now and that should solve this problem. It doesn't feel too bad and I just checked it. Easy to do. Um, a lot of this maintenance on this mill is easy to do, right? If you do not have one of these guys, these magnets, get one. Actually, get three or four. I carry them with my toolbox in the field. Prevents me from losing nuts and bolts. With okay, so. Um, I could spend a little more time doing that. Certainly wouldn't hurt um, playing with it a little bit more. However, uh, I've got a job to do, and it's almost five o'clock. Sun goes down. It's forty-five minutes from going down now. I got to get stuff packed up and ready to go in the morning so I can leave early. So I've got to get a band on. Um, I've got everything cleaned up well enough I need to do a quick lube I'm gonna test it here see how it goes uh, see how the uh, head moves back and forth so we're gonna do that um, I should do it with a uh, with a band on but um, before I test it with a band on I'm just gonna go ahead we want to make sure everything is clear <clears throat> before we do this and everything is not clear. That would not be good, eh? All right, there we go. Let's uh, hit that forward switch and turn up the volume. So that's the typical milling speed around here. You run her up straight up. It should just about run away from me. A lot of torque. All right, that was pretty good. So I think we're good. I think that the issue I had was that the drive belt was just, um, was way too loose. So that's good to go. Tomorrow we are going to do Logzilla's brother and sister. <laughs> We're going to do the two remaining logs that Logzilla came from. I think uh, one of those starts at about 32 inches at the base and then drops down to 30-ish or so. Got to measure them still. The mill should be able to pick those up. Uh, just Logzilla can do. So anybody tells you that this mill can only handle a 4,400-pound log, well, kind of. But if you can help it lift it, you can handle it. So... Uh, we're going to do that. We're going to try to knock those out, both of those tomorrow, get that done. Then I can come back, do a nice 
good service on the mill i think i will actually hose her down get it cleaned up really good um get it prepped for the winter and then i'm going to take it up to our cabin and try to get some more d logs milled so that's the plan anyway thanks for watching i appreciate it don't don't forget to hit that like button it really helps and